Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me for the English speaking group. Hello. Um, let me get this presentation pulled up real quick. Um, your screen. All right. So this is going to be our second part of our workshop. Oops, second. Everything's covered. Okay. All right. So uh, this is going to be a second part of our workshop, the composting workshop. Uh, we usually do this once a year. Uh, we actually combined uh, two workshops this time around. We're doing regular composting and also worm composting during this presentation. So. Uh, if you guys need to take any notes, um, especially when it comes to uh, how to maintain your compost pile, um, feel free to, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Yes, uh, Maria? Uh, just quick question. Will we have access to this uh, presentation after? If you want a copy of the presentations, both the Food Justice one and this one, we can send you a copy via email. Oh, okay. Uh, there's also going to, we're also going to be posting these on uh, YouTube. That way, you, uh, if you wanted to rewatch everything, you can rewatch it as well. Oh, okay. All okay. right. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, no problem. All right. So, uh, composting for 2020. All right. So, we're going to go over a little bit about compost and fertilizer. So, just to define compost and fertilizer, compost is decomposing organic matter. It's created through the natural process of recycling organic materials such as leaves and vegetable scraps into rich soil amendment. Compost, aka black gold, is unique as it enriches the soil food web, which includes microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi. So fertilizer, both organic and chemical fertilizers, are sourced from either natural or synthetic uh, materials such as manure, nitrogen, which is from petroleum or natural gas, phosphorus, or potassium compounds. Fertilizers are intended to meet the needs of fast-growing plants versus enriching the soil food web. And so this is just a little picture of the differences and how they look. This is a regular compost made from uh, food scraps and then fertilizers is granulated fertilizer uh, that's conventional fertilizer. I wanted to point out also in these pictures notice how the person holding the regular compost doesn't have to wear gloves while, uh, the, while the person holding fertilizer has to wear gloves while applying it so that shows you obvious differences uh, to begin with. Um, okay so I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of compost and fertilizer. So for compost, uh, the pros are that it's free and completely natural. Uh, you're able to reduce your waste going to the landfill. Uh, it's better for the life of your soil and you're unlikely to burn your plants. It also improves soil structure and water retention and it's easy to apply. Uh, some cons are it takes time and work to process compost. Uh, sometimes it's hard to source the ingredients or materials. And then the nutrient profile of your compost depends on the ingredients that you're using. So, and fertilizer. The pros of fertilizers is that it's widely available and typically it's very uniform when it comes to its nutrient profile and it's easy to apply. The cons are that it can actually disrupt the soil food web and it can actually burn your plants, which is over fertilization. Um, it can be expensive, it can also cause water contamination, both in rivers, lakes, and in the ocean. Uh, if you've ever heard of the red algae blooms in the ocean, that's actually caused by excess uh, nitrogen fertilizer off from farms in the coast. Um, there's also uh, synthetic nitrogen fertilizers are made from petroleum or natural gas, which is a non-renewable uh, source. Okay, so why should you make your own compost? There are many benefits for making your own compost, but here are the top three. So environmental, you can reduce the waste that goes into the landfill and reduce your carbon footprint. You can also focus on self-sufficiency, so you can rely less on outside sources for compost and fertilizer from big agricultural corporations. 
Third is soil biology structure and nutrients. It helps improve nutrients and the bioactivity in your soil so your plants can thrive. So uh, this is a list, half a list of uh, what's required to make a compost. So your compost is going to be 50% shredded green materials, which is considered nitrogen. Um, the list goes as follows. Uh, fruit and vegetable peels, ground coffee or tea bags, eggshells which are crushed, grass clippings that are not sprayed with pesticides, trimmings from perennial and annual plants, vegetarian animal manure, uh, such as horse manure, uh, but no dog or cat manure, uh, hair, fur, or feathers, and weeds without seeds, uh, but no root spreading weeds like verbena grass. And then the other half of the compost is percent shredded brown material, which is carbon. Um, it's dried tree leaves or bush leaves, with the exception of walnut leaves and poison oak. Pine needles, uh, wood such as branches, sawdust, and chipped wood. Uh, straw, oh, straw or hay, uh, corn stalks, paper such as newspaper, printed paper, paper plates, napkins, and coffee filters, dryer lint, cardboard, and wood ash. And so this is a list of stuff that you should never put in a compost because they can cause a couple of problems. Um, so do not put meat or bones in your compost, poultry and fish, fatty food waste, whole eggs and dairy products, human or pet feces, uh, weeds with seeds or spreading roots, treated wood, and diseased plant matter. So this is a couple of examples of compost bins or piles that uh, vary depending on uh, capacity. So this is the first one here is the uh, two systems, one for putting in materials and one with more finished compost. This is all made from recycled pallet wood. Uh, the middle one is a tumbler which has this little door where you can put the ingredients in and it's really easy to turn your pile by using the handle here. And then the third is a wire mesh compost. Uh, you can easily make a compost pile using chicken wire um, and some wood, um, but that helps it have a lot of uh, aeration for the pile as well. So those are just a couple of examples. So um, with compost, you're actually going to be layering the carbon and nitrogen layers or the browns and greens. So in the bottom, if you have any wood or a wooden pallet, when you're gonna put it directly in the bottom of the compost pile. And then you start off with your dry or brown materials, which is about uh, three to four inches of dry material. And then you follow it up with nitrogen, which are the greens, which are wet, um, three to four inches of that. And then what you can do is add either a vegetarian animal manure or a soil as the next level. Th this part isn't completely necessary, but it will help your compost process a little faster. And then after that, you just, sorry, you just repeat those layers until you use all the materials. So um, this is just a typical structure of compo a compost pile. This is important just because you want as much contact between the dry and wet materials as possible that will actually increase the effectiveness of the decomposition of the pile. All right, so how to maintain and harvest from the uh, compost pile. So the important thing about compost piles is introducing air and water. Uh, if you're, you can use a garden fork or shovel, or if you have a tumbler, you can turn the compost once every week or every other week. You can water the compost once in a while so it's wet as a damp sponge. Um, you can add material as needed, uh, both green and brown layers as your household produces it. Uh, but remember that compost is gonna take longer to mature the more often you add this material. And make sure before you add any material that you shred it. And then harvesting. Uh, after three to six months, your compost will be crumbly and a little finer. It will also have a nice earthy smell. It shouldn't smell at all. Um, 
the pile size should also decrease dramatically. Usually it decreases about half or even less than that of that amount. Um, you can harvest the compost and use it as a top dressing for your plants, or you can dig it into the soil uh, to use it. Okay, so some troubleshooting on the compost. So uh, if your compost is too wet or too dry, uh, just vary the amount of watering if you can, uh, more if it's not wet enough, um, less if it's too wet. Uh, there's also issues with animal pests, so you can get rodents or raccoons if you're using an open compost pile. Uh, if you uh, want to solve this, you can actually do an off-the-ground composter like a tumbler, or you can have a completely enclosed compost bin. Um, you have to take note, one of the things that you're not supposed to put into the compost pile is meat, greasy, oily, or cooked foods, which tend to attract animals. Um, but typically, insects in your compost pile is completely normal, and it's normal for the decomposing uh, process. Another issue that some people will have is bad smells of their compost pile. So a compost pile will have bad smells if you're using too much green material or nitrogen. Um, what you can do is add a layer of brown or carbon materials to reduce the smell and turn the compost more often. And if you reduce the watering, that should help with the smell as well. All right, we're gonna move on to worm composting or vermiculture. So I actually prefer doing vermiculture over traditional composting. I have a worm compost at home and it's a, a lot more effective than typical composting usually. And what the thing I love about it is that I can actually do, do it indoors. Um, so it is faster than traditional composting. Your uh, compost would be ready in two months instead of three to six. Uh, you can use smaller containers, which is what I use. I use two uh, storage bin containers so I can use it indoors. It produces very high quality compost and compost tea. And because the worms do the digging, you really don't have to turn it. Uh, if it's done right, it won't be smelly at all. And it's a little fun. It's like having a small pet or a science experiment. Um, note the worms that we're talking about are red wigglers or Estina fetida, not earthworms. All right, there are some cons with worm composting though. Um, if you are composting with worms, uh, it won't kill seeds, so you can't put weeds in it. Uh, they do need protection against extreme cold or hot weather. Uh, the worms are living organisms, so they do need to be taken care of. Uh, it takes time and energy to separate the worms from the compost, and the startup cost for starting a bin depends on the type of setup and the cost of your starter worms. Uh, I got my worms actually from a comp worm compost composting workshop about a year or two from La Mesa Verde when we had a master gardener come in to do the workshop. So um, a lot of times you can find people online who's willing to se sell you worms or you can actually order worms online. Um, but that's one way you can actually get your pile started. So here are some examples of worm bins. Um, the first one is exactly the same style that I have for my worm compost. It's two storage bins. The inner one has holes for aeration so the worms can breathe. Um, and this is really easy just because it's very simple. It's pretty cheap to afford these materials. And if you want to start a small pile that's very manageable, um, this is a good way to go about it. Um, some people build larger wooden containers for uh, work, worm compost. This one's made from uh, completely out of wood. Um, but if you have larger piles and you want to compost more materials, um, this is a good way of doing it. And then the third is a compost tower, uh, which has a little spigot that you can get the liquid out of, the, the concentrated worm fertilizer, uh, liquid fertilizer from the compost. Um, you can get that and use it in your garden. Uh, the bottom layer is where all the finished composts are going to be. And what you do is every new layer, you're adding material. And the worms will actually travel between the layers. Um, 
to, to all the way to the top and then you change those layers as needed. But um, this is actually the composter that we have in our demo garden. Uh, if you ever have a chance, you'll actually be able to see it if you're ever uh, here visiting at Sacred Heart. Um, all right. Oop. Sorry. So um, what can you put in a worm compost? So the things that you can put in a worm compost is paper and cardboard, eggshells, fruit and vegetables, bread, tea bags, grains, coffee grounds and filters, and pasta. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, things that you can't put are very similar to regular compost piles. Uh, you can't put meat, cooked foods, citrus, garlic, or onions. Um, especially the citrus, garlic, and onions, it can actually harm the worms. Uh, Maria Luisa, you have a question? Yeah, I do. So for the pasta, do you just mean just like cooked pasta or can it go in with whatever sauces you put on a pasta? So it depends on the sauce. So if, oh, okay. you, if you put a lot of olive oil or if you cook it with meat, um, then you wouldn't be able to put it into the pile. Um, it should only be plain pasta, either uncooked or uh, cooked pasta without any of any meaty sauce because the meat is definitely something you don't want to put into the compost pile. If it's a tomato sauce um, that doesn't have a lot of oil in it, if it's just a plain like marinara without any olive oil, then more likely you'll be able to put it into the compost pile no problem. You just have to be wary about the salt content. Um, too much salt will actually harm uh, worms as well. Also, if you're using onions or garlic in the sauce, then you wouldn't be able to put it in the bin either. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, uh, moving on, uh, maintaining a worm bin. So uh, worm bins are pretty self-sufficient. You don't just have to follow a couple of things to maintain it. Uh, you can bury scraps in the corners and always cover the brown with browns like moist shredded paper. Um, you make sure the water is draining and occasionally you harvest the compost tea that forms on the bottom. Um, you have to make sure that you don't put too much fruits all at once into the compost pile because that can actually attract fruit flies. So add fruits in moderation. Um, and you, can, you have to harvest your compost regularly for the health of your worms. Um, they're better in the materials that you add in. Uh, you don't want them sitting in their own compost uh, for too long. So make sure that you're always regularly harvesting and adding things to the bin. Um, and if you wanna make it easier for the uh, worms to eat the compost material, you can actually pre-compost it by chopping it up or blending the materials in a blender and placing those scraps in the freezer. And then what you can do is defrost it before adding it to the worm bin. And that will make it easier for the worms to actually eat it. Uh, worms don't have teeth, so uh, they tend to favor more softer foods or food that has been de decomposing. All right. So, uh, how to harvest worm compost. So you first start off by feeding only one side of the compost pile for a few days to a couple of weeks. Then you're gonna dump out the compost and make small piles outside on a partly cloudy day or in a brightly lit room. The worms will actually dive to avoid the light. So you can harvest the top of the piles and make new piles to continue harvesting and separating the worms. Uh, then you just return the worms back into the worm bin and give them more food. So um, it is a little bit labor intensive just to get the worms out. Uh, personally, my experience, there's always gonna be at least a couple of worms when you uh, harvest them in your compost. Um, even worm eggs are gonna be in the compost. So uh, if you can't get all the worms out, uh, don't feel too bad. It'll be good for your soil and they'll help uh, they'll help uh, process your soil and process the compost in your garden. Um, if anything, your garden will love having worms in it. All right. So uh, this that was the end of the the presentation. Uh, we're going to go into the demo garden in a moment. Uh, let me check 
uh, the time oh. for the other yeah. pre for the there, pre sorry. Uh, let me check the time for the other uh, the Spanish presentation. I'm uh, you, I'm in contact with Jackie Carlo, and they're okay. they're pretty far behind us, so we can definitely have like a good Q and A session. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I actually did have a question for my <laughs> myself. Um, I, um, for the onion scraps, is that specifically you can't put onion scraps in the worm compost one, and then in a normal compost you can. I know you someone can, kind you, of had you can uh, put it in a normal compost. So onions, it's kind of a half and a half. You can put onion skins in a worm compost, but you can't put the onion itself in the worm okay. compost. Uh, if you put too much of it, it will actually kill your worms. Same thing with citrus. Um, they can't handle that much, uh, material, much, that much material, especially how strong that material is. Um, I've heard stories of people just killing off their entire piles just by adding too much onions or garlic or uh, citrus in their uh, bins. So um, if you are going to do it, just put a very minimal amount. I would not put a whole onion in there, um, but I would stick to a regular compost pile if you're going to do onions. Uh, did anyone else have any questions? Anything that needs to be clarified? Hey, hello. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hey, hello, Carlo. Yes. Yes. So this is Mariana. Um, one of the questions that I have about the worms. What What is better to do in, in order to keep the worms healthy and at the same time to keep the compost uh, with the right nutrients? I am talking about keeping the the beans in a sunny area or more is it would be better to keep them uh, in a place where it's maybe um, dry uh, in a dry area or maybe in a place where it can be humid so the worms itself because you have to wet the, the some of the material for the worms to be healthy um, you want to put it actually in a spot where it's a little shaded. You don't want to put your worms directly where the sun is going to be on them all the time because you want to protect them from uh, extreme temperatures like too much cold or too much heat. Here in San Jose, you really f focus on it being too hot, especially during the summertime. So uh, what we actually do here at the demo garden at Sacred Heart is our bin. We actually cover it with cardboard on top in order to give the worms shade during the hot uh, summer. So um, they'll do fine in either a humid or drier locations. You just need to make sure the bedding, like shredded paper, is slamply, uh, is a little moist before you put it in the bin because they do need moisture to stay healthy. All right. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, did anyone have any other questions? Hi, Carla. I have a quick question. Oh, sorry. I have a quick question. Is yeah. this a worm or is this a caterpillar? This thing. Oh, uh, let me check the camera real quick. One second. I can't see it. I can't see it. Um, I can't see where it. Where is your video? It's a caterpillar. It's moving okay. like a caterpillar. Okay, because they were in the garden. It looks like it's moving. It's pretty big. It. It's a, oh, that's a, oh, that's a, that's a tomato, the horned tomato caterpillar. So those are actually bad for your tomatoes. Okay. Wait, actually, no. Yeah, see, you see a little horn at the back end? Yeah. Yeah, it's right there. You can see it. It's a very tiny. But they can devastate your tomato plants. They can actually chew right through your stems. So you actually want to get rid of them. Okay, got it. Thank you. <laughs> that thing is huge. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> huge. Wait, can you put it to the camera again? Yeah. The... One second. Uh, my God. Oh my God, is that a cucumber? <laughs> no, that's a, that's a tomato worm. Tomato horned worm. Uh, uh, what is the best what? thing to do with him? Kill him? I don't mean to say kill it that him. way. Yeah, you, I would kill them, honestly. Okay. I would just squish them somewhere. I was going to ask how you kill them. What's the most humane way, humane way to um, execute him? 
Wash them uh, down you the can toilet. squish them or you can drown them in soapy water. Okay. Or alcohol. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I wouldn't use alcohol. It would just be soapy water or, um, yeah, just either way. Them. And, and I them. Was he in the ground or was he on her plant eating it? I don't know. My husband found them and brought them in here. <laughs> oh, just, my gosh. That's, the first time, man. that's scary. Yeah, but they're I, huge. I didn't know what they were. Yeah, they're they are really tricky too because they'll hide underneath all the foliage. Uh -huh. um, really Maggie, hard. I would also uh, make sure to check your um, your plants just to okay. make sure they didn't a uh, lay any eggs. Okay. Okay, got it. We'll do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Super big. Okay. I, mean, well, I got. I had, had one. Last mm. Mm. Well, Mani, do you have a question? I have some worms, and I don't know what kind of worms they are. I got coffee grounds from my compost, and this is what they look like. Can you guys see that? Mm. Can you guys see that? Mm. Oh, one second. Uh, it's a little hard to see it. Uh, okay, let me open up my compost. Did you add worms to it? I got, I got coffee grounds from uh, Starbucks. And this is what my compost looks like, but I got all kinds of worms in there. They're these black worms. So those are probably just regular earthworms. So Can the worms that these? I'm talking about they, are the red worms. Okay, I don't, I don't think I have red worms. Let me, let me steer this and I, I'll find them. They're these black worms. There's a whole bunch of them. There they are. See that one right there? Okay. Mm -hmm. The end of my shovel. The end of my yeah. shovel. Yeah, I see it. It's going down into the ground. I mean, going down into the compost. Did you add? So I, did you add? So is that oh. compost directly in contact with the ground, or did you add the worms yourself? No, I didn't add the worms. There's more worms right there. See that? There's one right there. Oh. What? I can't see it. It's uh, really hard to see it. I apologize. I'll have to send a picture. There it is, right there. See it? Can you right pick it there. Up? Okay. Oh, I can oh, pick it up. Yeah. That's. I think that's different, actually. See, look, look at that. Look at that guy. So that's actually um, a maggot, a lawn grub. So those are actually yeah. from June beetles. So those are actually bad for the roots of your plants because they will Great. actually eat the roots out of your plants. Okay, so what's happening is I got a whole bunch of those inside of my compost. <laughs> well, they're, they're good at composting, but you definitely don't want them in your garden. Feed them to the okay. birds. Okay, so, yeah, 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 I was thinking about giving them to my friend's chickens. So, yeah, no, chickens love yeah. those. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Well, Mana, I saw that you had your hands up earlier. Yes, I did. So, I guess um, I was had two comments one is uh, the horn worm i had last year and i just flushed it down the toilet <laughs> <laughs> and the second thing is how do you know how do you what is the difference between the earth and the red worm i guess because i never really added earth and red worms to my pile which i had for years and years but I believe I have red worms. I just don't so, know what the... The difference like, is, is that um, earthworms are actually, they live a little differently. Earthworms actually dig really deep into soil, um, while okay. redworms actually stay mostly on the surface, eating matter. So earthworms, earthworms dive really deep. They're the ones that come out of the ground when you uh, have rain. Um, they're not really good for composting just because they tend to not like how shallow the the worm pile, the worm compost is. Um, red worms actually thrive a lot more uh, in smaller containers and in more shallow containers that worm bins are typically. Um, they like to stay towards the surface under the uh, under the plant matter that's on the ground. So they just but, but 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 physically physically how do you tell if you have an earthworm or a redworm? 
-hmm. Earthworms are usually a lot longer than redworms. Redworms tend to be very short. Uh, mm -hmm. Aren't they fast? Okay. Carlo, up? just so you know, time check. Fernando is moving into the demonstration garden now. Okay, all right. Okay. I'm going to hop out, uh, guys. I'll see you in a moment. Uh, you can all leave the room, okay? And join the main group. Leave the room. Leave the room. Okay. <laughs> Go <laughs> Bye, to your guys. room. Thank you, Carlo. Mm -hmm. Vamos a... Tengo una pregunta para Jackie. Eh, ¿ya ¿Vamos a volver todo el grupo? ¿O ya ya deberían de estar regresando todos. Ah, ya, porque yo me voy a estar escuchando el, todo el grupo, ¿ya? Ok, perfecto. Ya, nos vemos en el jardín entonces. Oh. ¿Quieres quitar tu screen share? Fernando. Ya se fue. Ya se fue. Ok, there we go. No. Hold on. <laughs> I think I think I fixed it, Jackie. Oh, thank you. <laughs> awesome. So most people should be back. Um, so while Fernando and Carlo start getting settled in the demo garden, folks can continue asking questions here as well as answering. I saw a lot of folks answering each other's questions in the last phase. So um, feel free to continue here or share you know, any thoughts that came out of the presentation. Um, aquí, mientras Fernando y Carlos están um, arreglando ya en el jardín, eh, situándose para la demostración, um, vamos a continuar con las preguntas aquí. También igual pueden responder uno a cada uno, ¿verdad? Porque vi que en el link se estaban escribiendo en el chat. Um, veo una mano alzada. Joe, you have your hand raised. I will... Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I was wondering about um, those torn worm caterpillars. I know it's kind of going back, but... Uh, one time I saw that, I guess they become some other, they go into cocoons like a caterpillar and they turn into something else like a moth. Or but anyway, while they're in their cocoon, the spiders build webs around them. So when they hatch out, they're in a, they're, the spider has them. So that there was some type of spider, if you knew what kind of spider that was, <laughs> you could have those in your garden, they would get those guys. <laughs> Oh, I see. Trying to find the predators of the, I think y'all were talking about the tomato hornworm? Yeah. Like maybe there's a, I think there's spider that's a predator of it. I'm not quite sure. I don't know if anybody else on the group, on uh, the call knows um, the it's specific the, spider. In, like in the first off a whole bunch of them and then the spider webs all around them. So that we, if they weren't going to go anywhere, because when they came out, they're going to be like, the spider's dinner. <laughs> Alguien sabe, estaban hablando creo que en el otro grupo acerca de los, uh, ¿cómo se le dicen en español? Uh, a los estos gusanos que están en el tomate, que empiezan a crecer súper, súper grandes, pero estaba mencionando que una vez vio una araña, uh, este, araña en específico haciendo su, su red alrededor de esta de este gusano y quería saber si ahí sabían qué araña era esa y si la reconocíamos la, era, la podíamos poner en nuestro jardín, ¿verdad? Para, como predator. predator. Um, any other questions? Again, they're going to be setting up. Sorry. I think, I think Sorry. Maria has a question. I think I see someone raising their hands on their video. Yeah, I've had my hand up for a long time. If I can, I have three things I'm kind of trying to keep track of. Two of them are comments and one's an offer. So um, I have been uh, working on my worm compost during this composting class today, which I could show you if you'd like. But the three comments are, first of all, in my class, we said that you shouldn't put cooked food into your worm compost. And I do that all the time. Um, I thought this, the point about not putting salty food in was good and certainly not food with meat or with a lot of oil in it. But I do put cooked food into my worm compost all the time. And I'm not sure why there was the um, there was the request made not to put cooked food into worm compost. I was confused by that. I was very surprised. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is Fernando. I, I think uh, the problem with that is uh, they can bring some other pests, uh, like uh, uh, rats and other stuff. I don't think this is a problem. 
I'm vegan. I, there's no meat involved. I also don't cook with oil, just it's, it's, which is not related. But I also I don't I don't eat oil at all. I'm like a non-oil eating person. Um, so anyway, um, I put cooked food into my compost whenever I have like food that spoils or something. Um, and then the second thing um, was um, I wanted to also comment in regard to worms when you separate your worm compost that if you put worms into your garden soil, most of them are going to die because they are not, they are not worms that live in soil. They're worms that live in like leaves and in um, richer situations like, like leaves and grass and um, plant material. So they, they won't actually live in the soil. Um, it's, not, it's not like bad for your soil, but it's not gonna increase really the population of worms in your soil. And then the third thing I wanted to say is that I have um, a lot of worms because I've been doing worm composting for, um, I think, over 30 years. And if somebody has a worm compost situation where they are getting started with worm composting and they would like to have some worms, um, I could actually give you worms to start with. I want to see if I can. Um, oh, I don't think you can. I don't know if you can. Are you actually seeing me? I'm not seeing me at all. Oh, there. So, like, this is the, this is the worms that are in this compost I just separated. Can you see the worms? There's like wow. millions of them. Yeah, yes, they look great. The worms. That's just, they yeah, this look is just, wonderful. this is the, the soil. Yeah, this is the soil that I separated from one layer. Here's, here's the layer. This is, I don't know if you can tell, that's a plastic bin thing and it has holes in it. And I just am separating the um, compost from this bin. There's the compost that I've, that's like with no worms in it and it has water added to it. So it's just some compost and water. And I have two systems. There's a round one that I've had for 30 years, and there's a square one that I've only had for um, less than one year. So that's it. If, if, anyway, so if, if, uh, if there's probably other people who also have worms that they could give away if someone's starting a worm system and they need to start at worms. Thank you. Yes, uh, we are ready. Yes. Uh, Sorry, real quick, Maria, thank you for sharing. Um, is it okay if I put your email on the chat? Yes, okay. So, como vieron allí, Moria también eh, tiene lombrices para compartir. Voy a poner su información en el chat para los que gusten. Vamos a brindar ahora sí la demostración. Um, and I believe you all are spotlit on Carlos. Hi, thanks, Hi, Carlos. Hi, guys. I'm in the demo garden. Welcome again. Uh, you saw it a little bit earlier, but we're going to point out some specific things that we have going on when it comes to composting. Uh, and I'm going to show you a little demonstration and how to put a compost together. So, um, first off, this is, this is part of our compost bin. We actually took it apart. That way we can show you uh, what the compost will actually look like. Uh, Fernando, could you actually zoom in on here? So, yo voy, yo voy a estar haciendo el trabajo de eh, traducir y también cámara al mismo tiempo. So, ténganme un poquito de paciencia. Vamos a tratar de movernos hacia donde está Carlos. So, this is actually some finished compost. This is actually some finished compost. So, you can see it's brown and crumbly. So you can see it's brown and crumbly. It breaks crumbly. apart really easy. So this is the actually finished compost that you want to put into your garden. So uh, I'm going to go over layering. So, so hey, give me a second. So lo, lo que estaba compartiendo Carlos es eh, aquí tuvimos nosotros el compost y cosechamos bastante compost. Eh, eh, Ustedes pueden ver la estructura. Aquí les puedo mostrar la cámara. If we can show this compost. So nosotros cosechamos esta carretilla de compost después de por lo menos 5 o 6 meses. Así es como debería poder verse. Todavía está un poco mezclado con hojas y todo eso. So Carlos Naus se va a mover hacia armar la pila. So I'm going to put this compost back together real quick. And then I'm going to start doing the layering. I know how to do this. 
So, ahí está tratando de ver cómo se instala esa parte. De... Esto es una caja armable que recibimos de donación. Muchas veces recibimos estas donaciones de personas que vienen a dejar cosas de jardinería. Esta es una caja que se va armando parte por parte. So what I'm going to start off with is a brown layer, uh, sorry, a green layer. So this is the nitrogen. We bought a bunch of celery from the pantry that was going back. So I'm going to use this to make a layer. So, so lo, okay. lo primero que está haciendo Carlos eh, va a agregar esta parte que es lo que llamamos los materiales verdes. Esos parsley que encontramos aquí en el pan. Okay, so I'm going to follow that up with a brown layer with carbon. So we actually have uh, some hay that we're going to use, or straw. La segundo paso que está haciendo Carlos acá es eh, agregar la parte café, los materiales café, en la segunda eh, capa que se le pone. Eh, nosotros teníamos acá paja. Eh, afortunadamente ustedes pueden usar cualquier tipo de hojas secas, paja, cartón, hojas de papel. Eso ya le agregó la segunda capa que es la café. So there's another layer. So I'm going to follow that up by repeating the layer. So now I'm going to put more nitrogen or green material, so more of the, the celery. Y Carlos está continuando con la tercera capa, que sería de nuevo verde. Esto se repite una y otra vez. Sería verde café, verde café, verde café. Y al final siempre dejar una capa café en, en la superficie. Por lo tanto, después de una verde siempre va a ir una café. La capa café, de los materiales de café, siempre va a ayudar mucho a que no hayan tantas moscas. Y también de mantener la temperatura fresca para que se vaya descomponiendo la materia orgánica. So there's a layer of celery. Um, so you're going to keep on repeating this until it goes all the way to the top of the compost. And then what you need to do is water your compost right afterwards. So I'm just going to water this as, this as if it's already filled up. And you want it to be well watered to that of a damp sponge. But this will help start the decomposing process. So, Carlos, lo que está haciendo es seguir siempre con este orden de café verde, café verde, y uno siempre le puede estar poniendo a Wii para ayudar que el sistema de descomposición avance, no sea tan seco. Okay, so um, that's it with the regular compost for now. Uh, what we're going to do is look at our worm compost now. So, this is our worm compost. If you notice, it's the same compost that we saw in the uh, presentation, the third one. So, it's layered. So, if you look in the top layer, this is where we're actually doing all the adding the new material for the worms to get into. There's a lot of avocados and potatoes. And then under that, is going to be a layer that's going to have a lot of worms. This is actually halfway done right now. You can see there's a lot of worms. There's one right there that you can see. But they really like the decomposing fruit. That's their favorite food. And then on the bottom, 
This is almost finished compost. You can see there's still a lot of worms in here. Still a lot of worms. But this is what you can start using in your garden. But this is what you can start using in your garden. So you would, so you would harvest, harvest this, this put, put it on top of all the layers, and add more ve uh, vegetables and fruit on top of that. Entonces, lo que Carlos estaba mostrando es este contenedor para las lombrices. Eh, como podemos ver, tiene distintos niveles de la lombricultura. En la primera, siempre vamos a ir colocando las cosas frescas. En la segunda, eh, van a estar las cosas un poco descompuestas, pero todavía quedan. Y en la última parte, todavía está... Eh, la última parte todavía está ya listo para cosechar, vemos algunas lombrices todavía ahí, pero es algo que se puede ir cosechando de manera impartición. I'm going to share uh, with, with us how to harvest the liquid, the, the sea compost. So Carlos va a compartir cómo se puede cosechar el líquido de la, de la lombriz. So there is a little faucet that actually collects all the liquid fertilizer that comes in the bottom. So you can actually turn this and you'll get the fertilizer out of here. And then what you do is with that liquid fertilizer, you can dilute it in some water and uh, feed it to your plants. So can you show us that uh, we have? So I'll show you how it actually looks like. So I'll show you how it actually looks like. So it's really black. So it's really black. Oh, just like that. That's just pure That's liquid pure fertilizer. Liquid fertilizer. So, lo que nos mostró Carlos ahí fue este dispositivo tiene esta torre para la lombricultura donde uno puede cosechar el té que producen. Uno le llama té de compost, pero es es el líquido que producen las lombrices al descomponer todo. Y uno lo puede ir cosechando regularmente. Eh, tiene una válvula ahí donde uno lo saca y lo puede, conectar, lo puede ir recolectando en una de estas. ¿no? Ahí nos mostró cómo se veía el líquido. Ese es uno de los compost eh, líquidos más buenos, de mejor calidad y también eh, de mayor eficiencia porque es muy rápido. So um, there is a question on, is there a, a limit of how much worm juice a plant can have? So it's pretty safe to use, but I would dilute it at least uh, by four times the amount of water. Even a little bit more if you really want to. It's really concentrated, so you just don't want to end up putting uh, too much at once. Um, it will focus on growing more leaf growth if you put too much of it in a plant. So, la pregunta que fue, que hubo es, eh, ¿cuánto líquido de la lombriz o el té de compost uno puede poner? Y lo que Carlos recomienda es que uno, al cosechar el líquido, uno siempre lo mezcle con agua eh, en una regadera y así uno le pone mezclado. Es eh, súper concentrado, es muy potente, no va, no va a dañar ninguna planta, pero uno para hacerlo durar más, es eh, importante poder combinarlo con agua, eh, diluirlo en agua y así ponerlo en las plantas directamente. También tenemos otra pregunta aquí. Um, Socorro, feel free to get off of me if you'd like to ask it, but I think it was in relation to the worm tower. Um, just asking if they can go between, if the worms can go between the layers, or do you have to put worms in each, in each of the of the layers themselves, or they or are they free to move around? Um, y la pregunta es en el términos de de si del del worm compost, um, si las lombrices pueden navegar entre los niveles o tienes que poner lombrices en cada nivel. So if you look at the bottom of the layer, there's actually holes for the worms to go through. See, right there. So they'll move to the layer that has more food. So la pregunta que hicieron aquí fue, eh, en esta, esta torre de compost que vimos, eh, ¿uno tiene que poner lombrices en todos los, los niveles o está bien eh, ponerlo en uno en específico? Y lo que Carlos mostraba es que cada uno de los niveles de las torres tiene orificio, entonces las lombrices se van a estar moviendo de arriba hacia abajo, dependiendo de cómo uno va alimentando la torre. Pero lo que yo siempre recomiendo es eh, arriba siempre ponerlos frescos. La lombr estas, lombrices siempre, estas lombrices siempre van a querer ir a la superficie. 
por lo tanto arriba siempre van a querer subir y abajo van a ir dejando. Any other questions before we, in our last five minutes, before we jump into announcements? Oh, one more. Um, what would you do if slugs made it into the worm bin? <laughs> Uh, I would take them out, squash them, and put them in your garden. <laughs> Ahí preguntaban qué pasa si los caracoles o babosas entran en el en el en esta torre de lombrices. Carlos decía que uno los toma con la mano y los saca y los deja afuera nomás. No no va en ninguna competencia, pero uno siempre los tiene que ir sacando manualmente. I think I saw in one, uh, Megan shared that she put it in her larger bin, larger compost, right, Megan? Not sure. They'll just decompose. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Question I missed it. Uh, the question was in regards to if slugs got into the worm bin, what do you do? And it was remove them and, and throw them somewhere else, squash them and throw them into your garden for, for nutrition. Thank you so much. Um, we are going to wrap up uh, with some last announcements. If anybody still has questions, feel free to put them on the chat. I'm going to bring up my screen share. Um, so there's some quick announcements for everyone. Um, you should have received the email already, but if you have school-aged children, Pack-a-Pack is still um, taking sign-ups. That's gonna be happening. August 7th, 10th, and 11th. Um, and in order to, to receive the backpack for your child, you do need to register beforehand. Um, so please sign up there. Sorry, please. I'm trying to mute somebody. Fernando, please mute yourself. Um, Entonces, si eh, todavía estamos abiertos para la registración de las mochilas, si tienen niños escolar, de edad escolar, todavía están aceptando este, las registraciones. Este va a ser, las van a distribuir el 7, 10, 11 y 12 de agosto. Todavía hay, como digo, espacios, así que uh, por favor, regístrese ahí en el link. Um, the next announcement, actually, I guess unmute yourself, Fernando or Carlo, talking about the garden tour, if you would like to do the announcement for the garden tour. Uh, yes, uh, for the garden tour, uh, we're going to have this year uh, a virtual garden tour. That means we are opening now the, the process for those who are interested in show and be host for the garden tour. Our idea is to make some videos for that day, have those videos recorded. And for that day, it's going to be August 8th, uh, between... I think 9 p.m. as well. That's the first time for that activity. And also, we're going to have this. Uh, we want to some video, but in the, in the same day, that's post, so everybody can make questions. You know, we're going to translate this through Zoom, but also through Facebook Live. Están instalados en el, en el año. Vamos a estar haciéndolo virtual por el tema del COVID-19. Eso significa que vamos a estar visitando unos jardines de grabado para que ustedes como anfitriones de su jardín puedan mostrar. Y el 8 de agosto, desde las 2 y media hasta las 12 más o menos, eh, mañana, vamos a estar eh, haciendo, mostrando sus videos, pero al mismo tiempo vamos a estar en vivo. Así que respondiendo preguntas y teniendo interacción a través de esta llamada. Entonces, para quienes estén interesados en una opción y podamos grabar su jardín, correr en hacer una llamada aquí a mí, mandar un mensaje de texto para que lo podamos inscribir y junto al Comité de Actividades Sociales Vamos a estar viendo finalmente quiénes eh, en fin del, del tour de jardines, de este recorrido de jardines de este año. So for those who be host, please send us an email.
see. I think you're breaking up um, because he's outside, but he's just saying, inviting folks. Please share Fernando, you're breaking up, so I'm going to put you. I'm sorry, what? You are keep breaking up. So you Maybe he needs to go inside. Go yeah. for it. Sí, nos escuchamos. Sí, so, <laughs> nomás por fin, este, si alcanzan un poquito ahí, como saben, cada año, este va a ser nuestro quinto año que hacemos nuestra gira, pero obviamente por el COVID vamos a hacerlo por línea, eh, en línea, este, si quieren exhibir su jardín, este, por favor déjenos saber, porque queremos tener por lo menos cuatro jardines, um, que queremos hacer este video, parte grabado y parte también en vivo, como, así, como hoy, uh, so, si están... Ya, ya vimos un poquito, ¿verdad?, de hoy en la mañana en el jardín, súper lindos, igual queremos hacer algo así para este día desde el 8 de agosto de 9 y media a 12. Um, comuníquense con nosotros si quieren ser uno de los anfitriones. So, um, just one recap uh, in case parts were cut off. Um, you know, this is our fifth year, we're doing our garden tour. Unfortunately, obviously, we cannot do it in person, so we are still going to do it, but online, and we are trying to find garden hosts, just as we got a little preview today in the morning um, with some folks showing off their gardens. Similar, um, except we want to do part part that's recorded. Um, so we have some good visual and then part that will be live like today. Um, if you're interested in hosting, please contact us. And then the last announcement is volunteer opportunities. Um, we're always looking for more folks to, you know, continue to um, help us with calls, but not only for reminder calls, also just wellness, community building calls. Um, if you're interested in doing some of your volunteer hours uh, and doing calls to other members, um, please let us know. Sign up with either Carlo, myself, or Fernando. And then last but not least, um, if you'd like to do some volunteer hours here at the food pantry at Sacred Heart, um, also, same thing, please let us know. There will also be opportunities during the back of back, back, of back um, distribution. So just other opportunities for us to continue to do our volunteer hours. So lo por último es um, las oportunidades de voluntariado. Eh, siempre estamos buscando miembros uh, que nos ayuden con llamadas y no necesariamente nomás ser de recordatorios, pero también llamadas um, donde puedan llamarle a sus compañeros de jardín, ¿verdad? En parte de nuestra misión aquí en el Sagrado Corazón y en la Mesa Verde es crear esa comunidad y esas conexiones. Entonces sabemos que el poder de una llamada, de hablar con alguien, puede ser del jardín o puede ser de otras cosas. Así que si está interesado en, ayudar, en apoyar con eso, um, déjenos saber, Fernando, a Carlos, a mí. Y también, por último, uh, oportunidades de voluntariado aquí en la dispensa del Sagrado Corazón, uh, repartiendo la comida. También en los días de las mochilas vamos a tener oportunidades de voluntariado para que cumplan sus 15 horas, que todavía vamos a tratar de hacerlo este año. Um, but yes, those are the last. Any other community announcements before we hop off? Thank you so much again, everyone, for joining us this Saturday, for sticking around. Really beautiful um, during the food justice as well as the garden, um, the garden tour this morning. Any other community announcement people would like to share? Yeah, por último, anuncios de la comunidad. I would like, I would like to say something. I, I went ahead and sent out the emails that I said I would do on Friday, and I was able to contact a couple of the um, participants. So it's done, Carlos. Thank you. That's all I have to say. ¿Puedo hacer un anuncio sobre pasos? Ay, nos dejaron solo los maestros. <risa> no está Jackie ni Fernanda. Pues voy a hacer el anuncio sobre pasos. I'm going to make, hi, my name is Socorro. I also work at Sacred Heart. Um, and I'm going to be making this announcement in Spanish because I oversee our immigration committee, which meets in Spanish. Um, yo soy Socorro, yo trabajo en Sagrado Corazón. Yo trabajo con nuestro comité de inmigrantes que se llama Pasos, Personas Activos Sobresalientes Organizando Soluciones. Um, y en este momento estamos haciendo las investigaciones para llegar no, no. para lanzar 
una campaña para papeles para todos. Si te interesa, por favor, escríbeme un mensaje para que te pueda invitar a nuestras reuniones. Um, usualmente nos reunimos los miércoles de 6 a 8 y estamos reuniendo con personas por varias partes de, de California y también de Nueva York para lanzar esta campaña de papeles para todos. Gracias. Jackie, you're on mute. No se oye. No, Jackie, algo pasa con tu micrófono. Something happened with your microphone. So we have any other uh, member who want to share any announcement? Algún otro anuncio? Oh, so sorry. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Well, I was just saying thank you for joining us today <laughs> on Saturday. Hopefully people caught my last announcement about the garden tour, volunteer opportunities. Yes? Okay. They, they, I awesome. Hear Great. Well, um, thank you so much again. If there's no other community announcements, we are closing up today. Thank you for joining us this Saturday. Beautiful, beautiful. Go enjoy your gardens. Go enjoy your harvest, and the sun. So, muchas gracias a todos. Oh, ¿me vas a decir algo? <laughs> muchas no, gracias a todos de nuevo por compartir parte de esta hora con nosotros. Y este, estamos súper agradecidos de, de su tiempo y vayan a gozar el solecito, su jardín, y obviamente su cosecha. Nos vemos para la próxima. Gracias, bye. Thank yeah. you so much. Have a good bye. day. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. It's a break. Gracias, Jackie. Bye, Jackie. Bye, Bye Carlos. Bye, Bye Fernando. Bye, Carlos. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Yo también digo bye.